to Scary Chef Sherry's series and today we are cooking one of my favourites, one of the uh, recipes that I learned through K-drama. So we are making some kimchi fried rice and we are going to make my favourite mango dessert. Now this is a true Scary Chef Sherry recipe because it's not official. So I used to watch them make kimchi fried rice in K-dramas and this is kind of my version of that um, and googling and whatever random things I could get in the lockdown. So this is my easy kimchi fried rice and the mango dessert just came to me one day because I always felt like mango and coconut goes well and I was like hmm, why don't I try this. Um, the OG viewers will know this was like way pre-pandemic when I thought of this dessert and it is divine. So I'm going to share both these recipes with you today. Okay, so for the kimchi fried rice, obviously you're going to need some rice, duh. Uh, we're going to need kimchi. I've got two types of kimchi, cabbage kimchi, radish kimchi, any kimchi works. Two eggs um, and some soy sauce, fish sauce, some sesame oil. Again, these can be so like you can use any oil. You don't really need sesame oil specifically. Fish uh, sauce and eggs um, and the next ingredient bacon can be skipped if you're like going for a veggie option. And also then we have some spring onions. My spring onions were really, really sada hua, but I'm cheap. I didn't want to waste them. Cut them up anyway, and we're going to use them. Dessert is very simple. Just some cut mango. I cut this myself, guys. Yes. Yay for Scary Chef Sherry. Um, and we've got some chia seeds. So chia seeds, any chia seeds work. These are the ones I have. And some coconut milk. Okay, so we're going to start with the dessert prep first because uh, the chia seeds need to actually soak for some time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some chia seeds in a bowl, add some water to that, spill some water, obviously, because everything tastes better when water is spilled. <laughs> Not really, don't spill any water. And you just want to stick that into the fridge then, um, you know, for at least 30 to 40 minutes till the seeds like fluff up or overnight is great. You can actually just do this and stick them in the fridge and leave them there. That's what I usually do for three, four days. And then I keep using them little, little, little in, you know, all kinds of stuff. With the mangoes, now we're using two Alfonso mangoes. Again, this works with any mangoes, but of course, Alfonso tastes the best. Even badami tastes really good with this uh, recipe. And you want to chop them like this. So you're going to peel them really gently, you know, get the skin off. Then we're going to cut them like this. Yes, scary chef Sherry is cutting these mangoes, guys. I've come a long, long way. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the skill. And yeah, then obviously you don't want to waste any of the mangoes. So do a little arm sutra with the leftover gutli and whatever else is left over. Enjoy it all. And then stick everything in the fridge. So your chia seeds in water, your mangoes and your coconut milk. We're going to just put these in the fridge and get started on our rice. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need for any kind of fried rice is a wok. Um, I got this one off Amazon in the pandemic because I was doing a lot of stir frying and stuff. We'll link it below for anyone who's interested. This is the one I use. First thing you want to do is light the light, li light, nahin, light the right gas. Uh, I'm lighting the aage wala when I'm using the piche wala. Oh, scary chef Sherry. Come on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw in the bacon. Um, I'm just using some smoked bacon. You can use any bacon that you like. I'm frying all of this. I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to use half. But uh, my child really likes bacon. So I'm frying some to add to his dinner as well. And by child, you know who I mean, Mars. I do not have a secret baby around. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just want to kind of put that bacon in there and, um, you know, let it fry. You don't need to add oil at this point, obviously, because the bacon has its own fat. Duh. And it's going to get nice and like crunchy, crispy. And if your veg, uh, hold on, don't run away yet. We will get to the point where you can do this without bacon and egg as well. Um, at this point, I'm also going to beat my two eggs because after this, I'm going to actually throw in an omelette into this to kind of remove uh, to add to the rice later so we're going to make everything in like one wok okay so we don't want to use a lot of like bartans and stuff because obviously you got to wash the bartans when you um, you know cook in them so we don't want to do that so just keep letting your bacon fry while your bacon fries we're going to quickly just crack some eggs and beat them which I am really bad at but we will do a decent-ish job, I think. Not bad, not bad. Very good, Sherry. Ek ho gaya. 
I don't know why I'm cracking on this, but uh, I think it's because I've got egg all over my hand and I don't want the egg on the churi. Avoid getting it in. Well done. Bacon is frying, um, eggs are being beaten. Look at me multitask guys, just look at this. Look at this chef. Mm, the smell of bacon frying is just something else, you know. So you want your bacon to have like that nice brown, like, you know, fried color this is not obviously like crispy bacon we're not frying it like um apna strips of course you can use strips as well i just use the cubes because i find them easier and they're ready you know so after your bacon has kind of you know fried you want to just take that out and um, set it aside for now that's what we're doing i have kept some of the fatty pieces left because um I mean, I could use that fat to kind of cook my egg um, and not add the oil as well because I'm also going to remove the egg from this. So, um, yeah, just leaving some of those bits in there because it's all eventually all going to be in the same wok anyways. So it doesn't matter. So we're just going to put that here onto the side. Um, let this, you know, bacon fat uh, cook our egg for us. Just going to pour that in here. Again, this doesn't need to be like a perfectly cooked omelette because we're going to chop it up and mix it into the rice anyway. So it's just about, uh, you know, randomly making an omelette and uh, using it. It's nothing like fancy schmancy. Guys, when I said my son loves bacon, I was not lying to you. He smelt bacon. Come from his sleep. Come here. Come bacon. Here. Come here. It's hot. Wait. You want? Aja? Good boy. Sit. Good boy here. Take. So while that is happening, uh, we are just waiting for this big fat fluffy omelette to cook. It's become rather brown because I was busy with bacon. Uh, but um, yeah, once that cooks, we're just going to plop that here onto the cutting board and then just chop it up later. So you want to get that off like this remove remove and we're just going to put that a little on the side here we'll cut it in a bit because it's really really hot right now so i don't want to um mess with the wok just going to reduce the flame a bit because you can see the steam coming out it's really really hot it's already greased uh so we're not using a lot just a little bit of the sesame oil and then we're going to add the chawal now uh, of course, how to make chawal is a whole different situation. I don't know that. So, don't ask me. This is just regular chawal, uh, which is made. And we're adding that to this. And you just want to kind of like fry that a bit. Now, normally with fried rice and all, you you know, people put the chawal in the freezer or they actually uh, use last night's chawal, all that. This doesn't really matter because it's a soggy, uh, kimchi fried rice is kind of soggy because you're going to put kimchi in it. So, you can just use like freshly made rice also. But obviously, stale rice is great because you can get rid of your stale rice in a yummy way. You know what I'm saying? So that sesame oil flavor is really, really yummy in Korean cooking or Asian cooking. Uh, something you learn in the pandemic, just like cooking. <laughs> um, then we're going to use fish sauce, just a tiny splash of fish sauce. Uh, again, veggies, you can just ignore this, uh, not necessary, uh, not needed, completely can ignore. Um, also add a splash of soy sauce, you don't again need this. Ooh, what was that? Soy sauce just exploded on me. It is okay, guys. <laughs> um, just a teensy bit of that. Again, avoidable, but I just like to add more ingredients so that it looks like I'm actually doing some cooking and... <laughs> no, it tastes yum, okay? And I don't really know if they, like Koreans, actually put soy sauce or not. This is my part of it, as I said. I've seen them just put kimchi and uh gochujang and stuff like that i don't have gochujang but if you have you can add that too 
Okay, now for um, the kimchi part, I've got two kimchis with me. I've got a radish kimchi and I've got a cabbage kimchi. Let me show you guys both those. These are my two kimchis. Uh, this one is cabbage, this one is radish. Um, gonna add a little bit of both now. How much kimchi you put totally depends on how you like it. So I would say start with little and then kind of build and see, um, you know, how much you like, how spicy you like it. It also will depend on the kimchi that you use. So I have tried many different kimchis and um, the, the way I make my kimchi fried rice kind of depends on which kimchi I use also. So um, this is something you're going to have to figure out on your own, sadly. Scary Chef Sherry, aapki madat nahi kar sakti is mamle mein. So that was the, the cabbage one. Smells funky. The funkier the better. This is the radish one. I like to mix both because I like the radish flavor as well. This also tastes yummy with like dal and other stuff in your house. So uh, always have a jar of kimchi in your fridge. It is yum. Maybe we can do a whole kimchi series like what to make with kimchi. Okay, so just want to kind of nicely mix the rice in like this. It's meant to look like red and khatarnak. Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. And we're just going to chop the omelette a bit either udar. Again, nothing fancy guys. Just roughly, you know, ye wo. And I'm sorry, I don't have a close up to show you guys of this because my camera is on that. And abhi shift karne ko chaungi to sab jal jayega. <laughs> so... Uh, just roughly cutting the anda. I've also got some spring onion, the one I cut up pehle. So we're just going to add all that in. Spring onion goes in. Anda goes in. And you want to nicely mix it. My anda could have been cut like neater and smaller, but I just didn't do a good job of that. Um, we're just going to own it and we're going to move on. Okay. That's that's how it's done. Uh, we're going to add some of the bacon as well. Not all, as I said, just a bit because we're saving the rest for my baby. Um, so yeah, some bacon. And just mix it and you're done. How good does this look, guys? Now for the dessert, basically, I've already got some uh, chia, which I fluffed up. As I said, I already keep some in my fridge. What we're going to do is take some coconut milk, put it over our mango like this. And then we're going to add some chia, the fluffed up chia into this. Now again, how much coconut milk, how much chia you use totally depends on whether you, you know, what you like and what you prefer. If you prefer more chia, add more chia. If you prefer more milk, more milk. You can also directly soak the chia seeds in the coconut milk if you want just for this. But I use it for a lot of other stuff. So I prefer to like fluff them in water and then use as much as I want for my dessert. So guys, that is my K-drama kimchi fried rice and my mango dessert that doesn't have a name. What should we call it? Give some mango dessert ideas in the comments, guys. What should we name it? So that's it from Scary Chef Sherry today. I hope you enjoyed the recipe, found it easy. Comment below, let me know your thoughts and suggest names for the mango dessert. See you guys. Bye.